Hello Java developers! My name is Matt Rabel. Today I'd like to show you how to use Spring Cloud Config to configure your microservices and share your configuration between microservices. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that we published back in December and you'll notice it is updated very recently to take advantage of Spring Boot 2.5. At the bottom of this blog post, it links to a GitHub repository. And in this repository, I have a demo script. All this demo script is and is, is a condensed version of the blog post with just the minimal steps that I need to do the tutorial. I will put that on the left. And what we'll do is we'll create a central configuration server using Spring Cloud Config and Spring Boot. We'll create two separate microservices using Spring Boot. We'll secure those applications using OAuth 2.0 and Okta. And then I'll show you how you can configure things to actually make it so you can refresh that configuration without restarting any of your servers. So that's pretty slick. So let's get started. You'll see here you're going to need Java 11 and Okta CLI to get started. I have Java 11, see there open JDK and Okta CLI. And the Okta CLI you can get from cli.okta.com. So you'll see it shows you how to install it. If you're on Linux or Mac, it'll prompt you and show you those instructions. So don't worry about it showing me, you know, Mac right here. It also has Windows instructions. And so to begin, we'll go to start.spring.io and select following options in our browser. Group, artifact ID, config server, cloud config server for the name. None of those really matter. But the important thing is the dependencies, Spring Security, Spring Web, and the config server. I have this link that'll take me there automatically. And you can see if I expand it, it's got all that configuration and all those dependencies. So we can click generate to download it. Now we can open it in our IDE. I'll go ahead and go into that downloads directory, config server, open it up in IntelliJ. Then I'll open up application.properties. And I'll go ahead and specify the server port of 8888 a search location where I'm going to put the configuration files for the Spring Cloud Config Server, and then a username and password just to secure it for basic authentication. So now we'll open up the main class here, and we will enable Config Server. So our Spring Cloud Config Server now is all set up, and now what we want to do is create an OIDC application on Okta that we'll use to secure our microservices. So with the Okta CLI, you can do Okta apps create, and we'll just say, uh, yeah, config server works. Uh, we'll do web and we'll do other. And so you'll see the common defaults for redirects. I shows you what Spring Security might use, what Corcus might use. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and use these two here. So localhost 8001 slash login slash OAuth2 slash code slash Okta. That is the standard for Okta with Spring Security. And the second one on port 8002, that's our second microservice. So we just need to register both those as allowed redirect URIs. And then the post logout redirect URIs, those defaults will work just fine. So you'll see it created that OIDC application on Okta, gave us a client ID, and then it wrote everything to this Okta.env. So you can see we have our issuer there, we have our client ID, and our client secret. So if you don't have an Okta account, you can do Okta register and it'll prompt you to create one. So it already found one for me. That's why, you know, it's not doing anything. But if you register, it makes it very easy. You can get started in under a minute with our developer product. So in this search locations directory, which is in our home directory slash config, we're going to add a number of files. So I'll go ahead and create that take command will actually put you in that directory. So that's kind of slick with OMIZSH. And we can do uh, service1.yml. So uh, bi service1.yml, and then copy this code right here into there. And then to make things easier, I'm just gonna open up this directory in IntelliJ, and that'll make it easier to copy and paste because sometimes copying and pasting in the terminal just doesn't work like you expect it to. So. Um, we have this uh, Okta.env here, so we can grab this issuer out of it and then put that right here. And then the client ID. So that's all set up. And now we'll create a service one profile.one. So this will be for 
the profile one profile service one and we're just going to put a hello message in there and then another one we'll go ahead and duplicate that file and call it profile two and then another service service two for our second microservice and the only difference is going to be the port 8002 and then we have a couple uh, profile configs as well so service two profile one and service two profile two and so the file names are very important because they determine what configuration goes to which application so you can have a main like application.yml and put shared configuration between your microservices there this example is just showing you how to configure you know each one individually so uh, the application name right that's service one the profile that will pertain to these ones and then a label if there's a label that you want to have involved and so you know it explains it all here and how all that works so the label is typically if you actually pass in from the command line you know spring.cloud.config.label and so now we can open up the uh, spring cloud config service project directory and run it so we'll use the terminal here in IntelliJ and start that one up and then we'll go ahead and create our first microservice which will be service one you know you can go in there and name it all this stuff and then give these dependencies or you can use this uh, click here and you can see what's on the right matches what we have on the left we have a maven project java spring boot 2.5.3 our dependency spring web octa config client and actuator so we'll click generate and then open that one up And similar to the last one, we're going to want to modify application.properties. And we'll put the spring application name in there. And we'll also import the config server so it knows how to talk to the config server. And then this config URI and the username and password. So that uses basic authentication to talk between this microservice and the Spring Cloud config server. And then we can also configure it because we had Okta as a dependency, add some security in here that says, you know, require auth 2 login so right in that service one application we can drop it right in here and maybe this doesn't have a uh, jdk that's why it's not resolving anything so we'll go into here oh it's there it just took a while why isn't string resolved come on well maybe you know i know the code works so as long as everything got imported we should be good to go uh, we'll also add a basic rest controller here at the secure endpoint so there we are it just has that hello message which we will pull from spring cloud config and then we can run spring boot run with the profile one to pull from the spring cloud config server for that hello message oh it didn't like an import principal i don't know why it doesn't like java 15 but let's uh let's go ahead and open our module settings here and it says it's using, well, we'll change this to 11. So we import it from Java security principle. And now we should be good to go. So once that starts up, we can go to this 8001 secure endpoint. It'll prompt us to log into Okta. So you got to remember your credentials or this part won't work, right? Sure, we'll save the password. And you can see it's pulling that message, service one, profile one from Spring Cloud Config. So now if we go back and we decide that we want to do it with profile two, then it should say, you know, right here, spring or service one profile two. So as it starts up and there you go, service one profile two. So that's all working. It's pulling the correct information from spring cloud config server. So now what I wanted to show you is how you can configure your microservice to actually refresh its information from Spring Cloud Config Server without actually restarting Spring Cloud Config Server. We're gonna start by adding the refresh scope to our secure controller here. And so you can use this on any components or uh, controllers or you know anything that's pulling information in it from Spring Cloud Config Server. So REST controller services, all that kind of stuff. Actuator, we do have in this project, so we don't have to add the dependency, but you do have to expose it. So if we go into that service one, and add it right here and then we'll add it to service two as well just because you know we're going to want it in both of them 
And then we'll add a basic security class inside our main application class to secure that endpoint with basic authentication. So we'll go ahead and copy this. And this is in our service one. So you can see here, it's an actuator security config. It's just securing that actuator endpoint and it's using in-memory authentication. So it's just gonna have a service one user, service one password. So very basic. So that's all working. And then we have to add an order annotation. We want actuator to come first. So we'll do that here. Uh, we don't wanna require actuator to go through OAuth or anything. So that's why we want this one to be second. So if that basic authentication comes in, that'll use the first one. And then we can go ahead and start our application using profile one again. And then open it up here. And that service one profile one. And then go into here and say things have changed. All right, and then if we go back here, It'll still keep that same information, right? Because we haven't done anything to refresh. But if we were to go and open up a new terminal and hit it with curl, that, you know, 8001 actuator refresh endpoint with those credentials, it'll refresh it. And then we can do here and things have changed. And you notice what was really cool. We never had to restart Spring Cloud Config Server. We just modified those files and it picked up that information and everything worked great. So now we'll create a second microservice. And you'll see what's on the right matches what's on the left. So com octa dev, service two, microservice two, package name, dependencies, spring web, octa, config client, and spring boot actuator. Click generate. And then open that up. and open its application.properties. Paste in the information. So very similar to service one, and you'll notice the biggest difference is just the name, right? Everything else for Spring Cloud Config Service is the same. So we can copy the same configuration from our service one, including that secure endpoint. And the only thing that we're going to do different is we're going to make it so the user is different. So service two password and service two. And that's basically it. Like everything else is the same. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And if we open up 8002 secure, it'll prompt us to log in, but we're already logged in. That's the beauty of single sign on an Okta. You'll see service one, profile one. Oh, what happened here? It should say service two. What's going on? Did we mess something up here? Maybe we messed up our config. Service two. Service two, serve, aha. Right, so if we change that and did a refresh, that's not gonna work. But if we use that curl command, see if we have it in our history. And then we just change this to two and this one to two as well and then change the port to 8002. That should refresh it, and then boom, it all works. So I hope you've enjoyed this screencast that shows you how to use Spring Cloud Config Server to configure your microservices and share that configuration between microservices, and especially how to refresh that configuration. That can be very handy so you don't have any downtime when you change your configuration. So you can find the code on GitHub, in the Okta Spring Cloud Config example. And then the blog post itself is on the Okta developer blog, Spring Cloud Config for shared microservices configuration. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. If you did, follow me on Twitter at mrabel. You can follow my team on Twitter at OctaDev. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And have a great day.